Hey, Turbs. Hey, Turbs, how you doing, baby? You can't go out there. I know, you wanna go outside so bad. I gotta keep him away from the pool. Well, that's not very nice. That's not how we greet people, Cosmo. Be a little bit more friendly. The beep, I don't, I don't know. I took it apart, still beeping. I checked the security system. No alarms, no alerts, it's getting power. No idea what's going on there. You can't even see it. Smoke detector. It's been doing that all morning. I cannot figure it out. It's in the manual, thought maybe it's a CO2 thing. Nope. It's beeping. Don't know why it did it the other day too, and then it stopped after like an hour. I don't know. You wanna step up? Not a low battery, it's hardwired in. And the green light's on, so it's where it doesn't matter. I'll figure it out. Anyways, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Got a lot of yard work to get to and I'm looking forward to it. Feel a little bit bad about having to leave the dog inside, but he's gotta stay dry. I did the thing last week, so still gotta heal. That said, don't have to wait that long. Like by this upcoming weekend, you should be able to get in the pool. Healing great, by the way. He hasn't picked at it or anything. He haven't had to use a cone. Acting like nothing ever happened. I got my curtains down. This, oh, I forgot, okay. So I was about to talk about what's going on with the palm trees, but that's probably going to be the next video. I decided to split this into two videos. Need to grab these and get outside. Here we go. Set these down very gently. I know I said it in last week's video. I need to put a staple in this so that it will stay in place. Lots of annuals sitting over here ready to be planted up. And I want to make a very, very big dent in this this week. I want plants strung all over the place all summer long. I kind of want to just Get it all done. But the thing is, there's only two days this week with a forecast without rain, and that would be today and then Friday, the day before Saturday's video, you know, the day before Saturday. My initial plan was to do a video where I'm like planting stuff and the palm trees get delivered. That's not gonna work if I only have two days to film on a Monday and a Friday. I figure I'll just focus on getting annuals in the ground and into some planters, and then Friday, palm trees hopefully should be here, unless there's some kind of weather delay and can get those moved around and potted up and just kind of finish the area off. I won't be getting everything planted up because some things are safe for other projects or for other people's homes even. But like I said, I would like to make a really, really big dent in all of this because I, did, I, did, well, I don't want plants strung over the patio all summer long. There have been years where I make sure to hold on to things so I can have projects to do throughout the summer. I don't want to, I don't want to do that this year. We can have projects, but the planting stuff, I want to get it done. The first place to start would be to get these impatience in the ground. First. Okay, are you done? You got to go in. You can't stay out here. I know, because you'll get in the pool. Can't do it. Go inside. Keep Cosmo company. Oh, you just, you poor Thay. He's so sweet. Bless your heart. Hey Cosmo, how you doing Cosmo? I know I had said Cosmo would be outside for the videos. It's 54 degrees, it was 44 when I woke up. That's too cold for the bird. So he's by the window, keep an eye on him. Once the sun moves through, I'll have to probably go inside because he won't be able to, it doesn't matter. Let's just plant some stuff. I want to get busy out here. Uh, well, I got all the plants laid out and the, the palm tree company just showed up. They were supposed to call the day before, but they're here. So that that changes absolutely everything. <laughs> be right back. I hate it, what the f just happened. Sitting here, taking it all in, you know, start your day planning one thing and then everything just changes. I'm a planner when it comes to these videos. Like I like to have an idea of what's going on during the week, especially when there's only going to be two days where it's not going to rain. But I mean, this is a nice surprise. It's nice to have the palm trees back. Just, it all happened so fast. I didn't know it was coming. Normally they call to let you know that they're going to be there because you know they have to bring a crane they have to move the cars out of the driveway and everything the crane's not here it got held up by department of transportation i don't know what's going on so i have a giant palm tree sitting in the street right now the crane will be here in a little while the, here's the little the little stuff looks okay you know the plants always come out of that greenhouse sometimes looking a little bit rough the adenidia don't look too bad those are one of the more difficult ones to overwinter the alexander like it looks eh, it doesn't look good but you'll see it that it never looks good when it comes back from the greenhouse. They go through a transitional period and then they look better after a few weeks. Alexander, you'll see it when it gets, it'll be over there. I guess that I don't, if there's not a Wednesday video, then here's why. <laughs> it just got delivered on the day that I need to film a Wednesday video. Apologies if that happens. I do have a plant that I kind of wanted to spotlight, but it's not a very exciting plant yet. It's still a little one. Uh, I'll figure that out. There are a few things I need to do before I get moving with anything else. I'm still going to work on annuals and those things, but first I need to handle all of this stuff right here. Actually, the first thing I need to do is put on more sunscreen. The sun's starting to come out. 
The uh, Pygmy Date Palm needs a spray down. It has been dealing with Date Palm scale for a couple of years and it's getting better, but there's still some on there. So I want to get that hauled away to the driveway, lay it on the side and give it a heavy, heavy spray. This Queen Palm here needs a repot. Look at that thing. Really rounded out, needs to get into something bigger. I mean, that's a big palm tree to have in a little tiny container like that. So I already have a pot ready to go, except I need to drill a hole in the bottom of it. And I'm thinking this bird of paradise, this could probably use a repot as well, don't you think? It's not busting out the sides, the pot's cracked. Given the overall dimensions, I think it would appreciate a larger container. So I need to do two repots, one spray down, and then I need to get these moved out of the way. Oh, and there's a surprise palm tree that's not mine, and they forgot one of mine. I have a really big queen palm that goes over here. It's beautiful. It's a gorgeous palm tree. They, they didn't bring it. I think what probably happened is they label these. They put little tags on them with your last name. It'll say like one of six, three of six, four, you know, you get it. Head me down as having six because that's what I told them. And then when they got here, I was like, hey, can you take this bird of paradise? Which threw things off by one. So chances are that one just didn't get a label. So it's hopefully still at the warehouse. It's a queen palm. Those usually survive the winter just fine. So hopefully that'll be here <laughs> sometime in the next week or two. And that'll go over there. And here's the surprise palm tree. A very, very, very tall, single trunked Adenidia that's like, that's not mine. I didn't ask for it, but there was a miscommunication and they threw it on the truck because they thought I wanted to buy a single truck. I don't know. I'm guessing that when I called them to say, hey, you got to bring the crane because Washingtonia's got to go and the triple trunk Alexander is going in its place, that somehow there was a miscommunication that I also wanted a single trunked Adenidia. I went out to the truck and looked at it and I was like, you know, that's pretty. That's how much it was. The price is really good, like really good. Assuming he was right about the price, I'll have to wait and get the invoice. It wasn't much more than these little ones right here. Palm trees are really pricey this year. So I was like, okay, this also could use a repot. I don't have a pot big enough for it. It's a nice looking palm, not very full, but it has a good trunk on it, nice and tall. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but like I said, I'm happy to have it. Here's a better shot. That thing is, it's big. It's a nice size palm. They said it was the last one that they had. So I'm going to hold off on doing anything with it just in case it was supposed to go to somebody else who really wanted it. Clear there's some kind of miscommunication there. So just out of consideration to be safe, I'm gonna give that like, I don't know, a week or two and I'll just tuck it away somewhere. And if they suddenly remember, oh, that was supposed to go to this person, they can come out here and they can take it since they still got to bring my queen palm back. They'll be back out here anyways. If not, then welcome to the family. Beautiful palm tree. There's that date scale that's in there so that fuzziness there's also a few mealybugs in there you can see it on the fronds it's just i've talked about this robolini before i love robolinis this one in particular is just it's kind of a weakling and it's not one of my favorites with your know, plants their genetics is a thing sometimes you get a plant and it just sucks i've had multiple queen palms that were just bad usually they should be tough sturdy and grow with a lot of vigor sometimes you get some that just have a bad growth habit and they're just not the best and that's what the case is with this Robolini here. It's just, it's not the best of the bunch when it comes to this type of palm, but it's uh, still growing and surviving. So I'm going to take it around, get that sprayed down. We'll come back, do some repotting very quickly. And then I got to move my cars out of the way so that the crane can get in here and do the, I have so much to do in a very short amount of time. So I should probably shut up. Okay. Robolini palm is drying off, looking a lot better. It's amazing what a difference it makes if you just lay the plant on its side and blast all the gunk off and give it a chance to dry and then rotate and spray it. Didn't bring you all along to film that because I just kind of wanted to get it done really, really fast. Wasn't that exciting? It was everything I just said. I laid it down, sprayed it with the hose, high pressure, and then gave it a squirt with the bug killing stuff. I have this big pot here. This is a, I was going to say 25 gallon. I think this might just be a 20 gallon container though. I think it's a 25 and I think that's a 20. I thought that was a 50. It doesn't matter. It's a larger pot. Barely significantly larger container. Where's my, I brought a blade out here with me. Where'd it go? Yeah. Apparently I left it inside. Something this pot, wow, that's like, that's rock solid. <laughs> like really rock solid. I might actually have to get out the sawzall to get this thing out of there. Not sure if that's going to work, although with this much tension, yeah. All right. But that actually will do the trick. So I'm going to slice this out of this container because there is no way that that was going to slide out on its own. All right. Wow. <laughs> Look at those roots. I can't really say this was overdue. Gosh, there probably isn't much soil inside of there. This isn't the kind of thing where you can go through and just loosen that up with your fingers. When a palm gets this root wrapped, depending on the type of palm, I just take my blade and go through 
and score it. I know that, that seems harsh, but this isn't gonna get unwound by hand when it gets like this. And uh, they usually respond just fine to it. Go through and make some X's. Really important to get the bottom. Helps cut up the outer layer of roots, which sometimes makes it loose enough that you can pull them out by hand. Uh, and worst case scenario, it just kills them off. They decompose and things can push through. It's, it stops the wrapping process. See how they're swirling. Things can get choked out. Palms aren't usually that bad with that. And saying palms is a pretty broad general term. There are some palms where cutting the roots could end up killing the entire plant. So you wanna do some research with that. With the queen palms though, they're really sturdy. That shouldn't be an issue at all with this. All right, here's gonna be the tricky part. Just getting that to sit upright in this container while I backfill it. I should probably have a buddy for this, but it's me here right now. Maybe I'll try and lean it up on another plant. I don't figure it out. Oh, you know what I should have done here? I should have waited to put soil at the bottom of this and just done the thing. Well, too late now. There we go. Lift with the legs. That wasn't too bad. Oh, There's so much soil on the bottom. No, no, it's fine. That'll be okay. Just need to, we need to get something so I can fill it back in. That should do it. Got the buddy system going on here. Can lean over there. Yeah, that'll be good. <sighs> Welcome to a few hours later. Not, not much has happened. Y'all saw the queen palm get repotted. Think that's enough room for that root ball. Should be good for quite a while in there. I went ahead and repotted the bird of paradise and I didn't film it because I've been there, done that a lot on the channel. I'll link those videos down below if you're curious. I just did, but it's the same thing. Nothing special there. Just got out of its pot, threw into a new one with some all-purpose potting mix and threw in some slow release. I would like to throw in some earthworm castings, but turns out I don't have any. So that can wait. That's not a big deal. I get some earthworm castings. You sprinkle them around the top, work it into like the, I don't know inch or so down to the soil, water it in, ideally work it in further than that, but get them down in there. Same thing with slow release, doesn't have to be done right away, but you want it to be somewhat near the root ball of the plant. Trying very hard to steady my brain because a lot happened today. A lot's happened in the last week. So what I'm thinking is I should probably just go ahead and get these put where they need to go, at least the ones where I know where I want to put them, and then figure out where to put the other ones. Seems like a logical next step. There is some neat growth coming out here the bottom of this adenidia palm. I don't, I have no idea what it is. What did I plant here? Does anybody remember? It looks and feels like a chunk of alocasia stem, maybe colo I mean, maybe a colloidium. That's what I would assume. I, I have no idea what else that would be. Nothing else coming up in here, which isn't a surprise. Sometimes the heliconias come back, but not often. You can see where they were planted over here. Got the tags left in there from the plants last year. Still have the pseudoranthemum. Might toss that back in. I don't know. I don't think I'm gonna get around to actually planting these up, but maybe we will see. So the bird of paradise, I'm going to move that over there. Same thing with the robolini, which was dripping wet, so I wouldn't weight it back down so it could dry, because it's just like pouring water all over my head. All right, Adenidia, that goes over here behind the fan. There's a queen palm that goes here, but they don't know where it is. Or it's in the greenhouse somewhere. They'll get it over here. Not concerned about that. Queen palms don't really die in that greenhouse, so it probably just got misplaced. It's a little mix up. Not a big deal. And then I have these two queen palms here. We're down at the other end in some pots. I'm not putting them in pots this year because they blow over. I had one of those right here last year where I put this temple bloom, the heptacodium that's coming up right there. And uh, I kind of I can't like the heptacodium there and it's a perennial. So I'm on the fence as to what to do. I was supposed to dig this up and move it this spring, but I'm getting attached. It's already put on a good amount of growth. I think that that would be like an awesome perennial I have right there. The palm tree looks really neat there too. But there's already like bananas and the croton, like things are pretty tropical in this spot, especially once these gingers start coming up. Like it doesn't really need a palm tree. It would look cool, but it doesn't really need it. And then the other I'm going to put so it's like right back. I'm just gonna do it. I'll go ahead and do it. Stop talking, get to work. You can see what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, that's a bit busy. I don't I don't think I like that. That's too much going on in this spot. Yes, I know the snowman's still out here. I don't wanna put him away. I've gotten attached to this dude. 
See, okay, now it's just a snowman. It's not a Christmas one. It can stay. No, I'm kidding. I'll get rid of it. I'll put it away. I'm not going to get rid of it. It's been entertaining because it peeks through the window, so when people over it startles them. I have a lot of fun with that. Yeah, it's time. Almost June. Need to put that somewhere else. The bird, of, like, it's just, it's so big. There's too much going on over here. I like the queen palm here. I'm going to try and stick the other one over here so that they're kind of framing the spot if it'll fit. There's not a ton of space between this cabinet thing and the, there's a stair over there. So I, I'm going to try it. The bird of paradise though, that's not working for me. Talk about champagne problems. So many plants, I don't know where to put them. I have an idea. It's just I'm doing things a little bit different this year, trying to rearrange and things are being bumped up into larger containers. So that throws things off just a little bit. I was thinking I can go ahead and pull the smaller palms out from right here and the bird of paradise might look really nice next to the potting bench there, especially at night when that light's going for the Edenidia will be right here in front of that. Uh, I'm going to think on that one. Edenidia is in place. You can see I need to change a light bulb up there. Uh, windmill palm's not staying here. This needs a repot. I'm wondering if it might have root rot. I've been suspicious about that for a while now. Did the fungicide treatments and some other things, but I, really the best thing to do with root rot is repot the plant, get it out of the old soil and do something with it. And that's a topic that I think would like be best to actually do in a video. I don't have time for it right now. So it's just, it's just hanging out right there. This is nice. It's where it always goes. Fits better over here now that it's a little bit taller than the light. I decided to not do the, well, you can see there's no bird of paradise there. The pot that I bumped this thing up into is so big that I don't think I really would have a lot of luck getting it back out once this is watered in. That's gonna be pretty heavy. It's doable, it's just trying to think to the fall time. Like, am I going to want to? Probably not. Also, it's been in a greenhouse, so I don't wanna stick it right into the sun, so I just shoved it into this spruce here. That's the best spot I can think of where it's not gonna get like hit really hard. The iguana, ugh, the iguana enclosure is normally right here, but I bumped the iguana inside. So the iguana enclosure, iguana, iguana, ugh. Yo, oh, my brain's done. The iguana, it's enclosure. It's in the garage right now because it's pretty chilly. But that should, ew, it should be back out here in a day or so. I'm going to leave in how much I'm fumbling with my words here. Hopefully you'll find it entertaining because it's ridiculous. I don't know what's going on with my brain and my mouth. Plan here. This stuff is going to come out. That pot is going to have a mule palm repotted into it. It's going somewhere else, probably the driveway. The mule palms and windmill palms, I have more out here for the winter. Not all winter, but a lot of the winter and early spring. Then when it gets really nice out, I tend to just kind of tuck them away. They can hide somewhere else to make room for the more tropical looking plants. So the iguana enclosure will be right in here. There'll be more room for it. And uh, I will pull this out and have it up framing that because it needs something to shade it a little bit more. Not much more. The cage gets a good amount of shade. And I will pull this forward <laughs> so it's not stuck back there. That'll make it look nice. But I kind of like the idea of having this over here. I do not like the idea of the black nursery pot being visible, so I will have to plant that very heavily with some petunias. That shouldn't be a problem. I think I got enough of those to use. And then over here, this is what I wanted to do, and I did it, and I like it. Just pretend the mess isn't there. Just imagine that it's clean and tidy. You're gonna have to. I don't have it in me to gut this whole spot and get it looking perfect right now. I like these framing those lights. It does like slightly, you can't tell, so I don't even need to really point this out, but it just slightly off centers that cabinet, which is behind those chairs, which are gonna go to the garage. These pots are gonna get glued together over the weekend. I have family coming in town and I thought like that would be a good time to do it. You can like hang out and grill and sit around and glue some pots together. Doesn't that sound like a great time? The queen palms though. I think those look fantastic there. I love a queen palm near a light source. We've talked about that before. They have this nice white powder that's on the trunks. I'll get closer so you can see what I'm talking about here. They have that husk and that white powder. The texture shows off really well in the evening. And by having them, I'll just hold the camera up higher where you can't see the stuff on the ground. By having them back there near the house, this little spot in there is pretty sheltered from the wind. So I don't have to worry about them blowing over. And I'm planning on, I'm thinking about moving the bistro set, which is, it's just a table and a couple of chairs. It's on the other end of the patio. When I cleaned this area up down here, I had mentioned that there's too much furniture between the chase lounges, the bistro set and the glider. And one of those things was going to need to come over here. And I think the bistro set would be the right thing to move down here, largely because it takes up the least amount of space. I can have it out just a few feet from, well, basically where all this junk is right here. That's where the bistro set would be. And then get these palms. I'll probably spin that one around a little bit, but it would be so nice to sit underneath the palm fronds because the spot needs shade. It gets so hot in this corner. It turns into an oven. Like the bedrooms up there just 
cook during the summer and the sun's bouncing off the pavement against the house. It's just basically an oven. The queen palms, they can take it. They'll be just fine there. They look nice at nighttime. But all that's left is our new Adenidia friend here, which I had mentioned earlier that I wasn't going to do anything with it until talking to the company some more, making sure it wasn't actually somebody else's. And he said that he talked to the owner on the phone that they were positive that this was for me, even though I never said anything about wanting it. I can't help but wonder, like, did, maybe they're like, hey, we have an extra one of these, throw on the truck, Jeff will buy it. They weren't wrong. Nice looking palm. The price was really good. I don't think I'm gonna do this, but let's just talk about it. Much as I love having the croton right there, it's always been there. Well, not always, but for the last several years, that croton's been in that corner. Wouldn't it look pretty cool to have the Adenidia right there? Go Adenidia, Robolini, and the Queens and just have like the little palm forest in this spot. It does leave one problem though, which is what the heck am I gonna do with the croton? I could take the croton and slide it over here and have that fun, colorful bush between the two. Yeah? Yeah, maybe? I think that might look nice. The, the palm tree though would get in the way of having a hanging basket there. The birds have gotten so used to using that feeder though that I don't really know if I want to uh, put a hanging basket in that spot because I feel bad moving it. This window's kind of become Cosmo's hangout. That's my parrot. He's inside just just through that window and he likes to watch the birds and they sort of seem to like watching me. I don't know, this is, just isn't the time for me to move that and make any changes. Try not to disrupt any of the patterns or habits of the bird right now. There's no harm in trying. Well, there might be, it thing's pretty heavy. Oh, we didn't, we still need to talk about the Alexander palm. We'll get there, get there at the end of the video. If it weren't for enjoying there being some sort of element of surprise in the videos, I would get onto YouTube right now and make a post with the little pull it and say, what should I do? And let you guys vote on it. I do enjoy that participation. I think it's fun, but it also ruins the element of surprise because you, you know, you didn't know that the palm tree was even here. It's gonna take a minute to think about it. Right, I, I, I don't hate it there, but not to be like snooty, cocky, arrogant, this is a really nice plant. It's one of my favorite plants that I have. Looks like garbage right now, but it'll look great here in a few weeks. And I think I'd like it to be more front and center than this, but I do like the way the lights are playing around with it. It's an easy plant to move around though. There's, there's that in Nydia. I went ahead and dug that hole out a little bit further. And then when I noticed that this had these drainage holes, see how those are up higher? Usually when you see drainage holes up higher like that, it usually means there aren't any on the bottom. So need to go ahead, pop a hole in the bottom of that before I can put it. That's really the only reason I picked up the camera was because I wanted to like remind everybody when you see holes like that in your containers, you gotta check the bottoms because usually there's nothing there. Ever do a really good job with something and just surprise the crap out of yourself? That hole was the perfect size. Slid right, I'm okay, it doesn't look like, it was the perfect diameter. I don't want it buried all the way down in there. Since it's in a pot, I like them to be raised up some. There will be annuals planted around here so that won't even be noticeable here pretty soon. I hear you whining, you can come out, but no pool to keep my eye on him. It has been really weird working out here without Turbo and Toby running around, but you, know, you gotta keep him away from that pool. I'm just gonna give him a minute. He's inside whining, he needs a break. You get that coconut, Turbo? You get that nut, good boy. That didn't sound right. You know what I mean, good boy, Turbs. Back up some, get a better look. Doesn't that look nice? I really like that there. It's just like perfect little tropical corner. And I will, I'll put the snowman away. I was just messing with you earlier. The snowman's gonna get cleaned up and put with the stuff in the basement. Croton though, I am still on the fence. I do like it there, but it's also like kind of hidden. And why would you hide such a beautiful plant, right? Another thing that's gonna require some thinking. Also like all of this in the front won't be visible. I have lots of pots that are gonna go here. It's lots of annuals and other house plants will be moved over into the spot. Get in the big palms place. That's kind of just like the bones of everything. The big details taken care of and then can fill in around everything. I like how this is starting. I think that looks fantastic there. It'll be really nice at nighttime, especially when those gingers get bigger and then those beautiful orange flowers that'll be like right up here, somewhere in there. The reason that I decided to go ahead and pull the croton, as much as I loved having it there, is for one, it's actually getting too big for that spot. When it starts growing and it's full, you have to reach through it to get to the door. That was getting annoying. And I'm going to have variegated Sun impatience here, spoiler alert, after I've already said it. These variegated sun impatience. And those are already really loud. So you don't really need the croton there with all that loudness from those impatience that'll be in the spots. I think that this is a good way to go. Yeah, I'd say so. That's beautiful. I love it. Dang, I took my eyes off of him for maybe 15 seconds and he vanished. Where did he go? I hear him. There's a creature over there. Maybe a turbo. Yeah, he's over there. I see him. Two more days so we can get back in the port. You know, they took the beans out, but they left the bag. Less invasive that way, but if he gets in the bowl, he might get water in the back. You get it? He needs to stay dry. The sutures just need to heal up. 
So the Alexander bomb. I did this. This is my fault. I did a bad thing. Oops. They pulled the Washingtonia out. No problem. Slid right out. They got the ad the did I call this an Adenidia earlier? The Alexander bomb. That's what this is. Got that in there and I was like, hey, that looks nice, but it had a lot of dead foliage on it and I couldn't reach it. I had the ladder out here and had a stick pruner. Still couldn't reach it. I was like, well, the ground's really wet, which was a problem. It was not standing upright. It was already falling over. So I was like, well, I'll just let it fall over and I can prune the rest of the stuff off and then I'll just lift it back up. The thing that they used a crane to put in, I was like, I, I can do it. That's no big deal. Just the skinny trunks. You wouldn't think it would be that heavy. It's a 36 inch pot. Okay, so the pot is massive, but it's plastic. Wasn't really in thinking mode today, really. Just kind of in work mode. Wanted to break a sweat, get dirty, and I certainly did. Spent a good 40 minutes underneath that thing trying to stand it back up. It just kept going at it until my legs and arms basically turned into putty. So that's good. At least I got a great workout. I'll get a buddy over here at some point and we'll pick that back up. The problem is, the ground down here is just soaked. It is saturated. Also, can we appreciate the size of the root ball on that Washingtonia? Massive. The problem is with the ground being all wet, I would start to get it. Like I almost had this all the way up a couple of times, but the ground was soggy and so it would like slide back down on me. Like it would push forward and slide back down. You know what, this is fine. I like it like this. That's perfect. Well, you know, I'm joking about that. It's fine though. It really is. The palm's not hurt. The Arborvitaes, they're pretty sturdy. They can handle it for a day. I'll, like I said, I'll get a buddy out here tomorrow. It's gonna be a two-person job. To lift it up, or I could like wrap a strap around it and hook a wench to a stake or something. There's solutions. It's just not gonna happen in this video. But I wasn't really gonna do anything with this spot in this video anyways, because I wanted to basically re-landscape that whole area. It's gonna take a little bit more time and commitment than I have right now, which is sniffing. Smell friends, there were a lot of people over here today. The Alexander palm, it's always, well not always, but the last few years it's gone over here. Just had a little hole where it was like, oh, well, six or seven inches dug there. And then would fill it in and that would help keep it from blowing over. There used to be a magnolia here. It was a deciduous magnolia. I think it was a Jane or a star. No, it was a Soulardia. I don't remember. It was a huge magnolia. Beautiful, but it got magnolia scale. And arborists come out and they basically said, we can pump the ground full of chemicals for two or three years to kill them. Or the best thing to do would be just cut it out. And I said, okay, cut it out. It's a native, never fun to do that, but it seemed like it was better for the environment to do things that way. And now that it's been a few years, the spot's okay to plant in again. And I want to put an evergreen magnolia there, a Bracken's Brown Beauty. If I can find one for a good price, it can be delivered and put in because I want it to be very big. Like the biggest one I can find. I want to go in the ground right there. That's why the Alexander Palm's not there. I'm very committed to this idea. This better happen this summer. I want that evergreen tree there. It'll be nice to look at through the window. Won't have to put those shades up in the winter time for privacy. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, you better come here. Come on. Come on. Come on, baby. Yeah, good boy. Good boy. No pool. Actually, why don't you just go back inside? Relax, watch the baseball game. Cards are playing the Jays. Looks like a pretty good game too. I forgot there's a bird's nest inside those fish there. What's done is done. If anything, it should provide some shade because I've wondered if they might cook to death up there. And I actually haven't heard the babies in a couple of days. They may have already fledged. Judging from the amount of poop I see on the side of the house, I'm guessing that they might still be there. Oh, I don't like to mess with nature. So hopefully that's just gonna provide some shade and not be upsetting to those birds. Even the Robolinium. I mean, this thing, look how big it's gotten all the way up to the lower portion of the pitch of that roof. Really done some growing over the years here, despite the scale that it's had on it, which by the way, hosed off wonderfully. They treated it over the winter. So I think that a lot of it was just old crusty dead stuff. I may have overreacted there, but I'm gonna stay on top of it, keep watching it and you know, do the responsible plant parent stuff. I love it. I like how everything came out. I think this looks good. I'll probably do some rotating and some tilting with some things, nothing around that bird's nest. So we're just gonna have to stay like this for a while. And now I'm excited to do the stuff that I had intended to do in this video. <laughs> just start planting the annuals, get some color going in these spots, which I don't think I'm going to have time for in this video. We will see. I'm gonna watch the forecast. Maybe there will be more, maybe not. If not, thanks for watching. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life. Everything just going beautifully for you and comment down below and say hi. I'm just kidding. I wouldn't just leave like that. I mean, I've done it before, but now we've done all this out here. It's the next day. Sometimes you just need some time to process. So Croton, I mentioned how I wasn't sure if I like it there. I can think of a lot of other spots that that'll work. So that's, not a big deal. It's a beautiful plant. Wherever I put it, it's going to look nice. And the Adenidia, I forgot. I mean, I didn't really forget. I remembered as soon as I started moving the pot around, it's going to need to be upgraded into a larger container. So I'm going to keep my eyes out for that, hopefully sooner than later, because I can't really go popping annuals and other things in front of the pot to mask how it's sticking up like that until I bump it up into something larger. It's great that I 
Managed to dig the hole just the right size. I love to dig a bigger one. It won't be that much bigger. It's not a big deal. The ground there is really loose. I could go down and sink it down level, but the ground saturation, about, I don't know, four or five inches below, that's where there's usually a lot of water. And we don't want it, the root balls to just sit in water, so it could rot the plant out. So that's why it's up partially like that. And then the birds, there's a nest of house finches up there. They've been going in and out of it. They don't seem to mind the palm trees. And I didn't really update with the pygmy date palm. I showed the date scale that was in there and didn't come back and follow up with that. So I came in, I did a lot of cleaning on the trunk. There was husk all the way down to probably maybe around here. Want to get as much of that out as possible so you can you know get in there with the waters and the sprays and everything. The blasting worked fairly well. I am probably going to hold off for a bit before I underplant this one. Maybe, well, I don't know. I don't know if I have the patience. I should hold off a little while so that once a week I can flip it over on its side and really get to the underside of the foliage there and get the gunk out, any bugs that keep re-emerging. But also, like, I'm gonna wanna plant this up. So we'll see what happens there. Doesn't that look nice though? Nice clean trunk, clean-ish. A lot of this fibrous material that's still in there, that'll come out over time with weather and stuff like that. And it'll start to get to have more of that characteristic sort of just like knobby appearance that you see on a pygmy date palm. It's getting that fun little pineapple top we like to see on those. Looking good. Happy with how it's looking. Could be more full, a little bit more green, but there are solutions for starters with that. Uh, this could use a soil refreshing, which is going to be very easy to do because I lost a lot of soil in this pot when I was moving it around and laying it down and everything, which I was totally fine with because that just opens up space to get a good soil blend down in there, help freshen things up. I'll probably add some compost to it, some earthworm castings, maybe some palm gain and slow release. We'll see, just something to help liven things up and get some more nutrients up in there. One, it'll help to make the plant just grow better and look better, deeper green foliage and better resistance to sun scorch and inclement weather, those sorts of things. Just want good immunity in the plants too. Healthy plants are more resistant to problems. So I'm going to get in there and get that taken care of and uh, all this be handling in Saturday's video. Well, maybe. I don't know. I want to get the annuals planted. Everything I talked about in the beginning of the video, we'll do that Saturday. Hopefully there will be lots of color getting thrown into the garden and hopefully I'll get the Alexander palm up over there. That ground was so soft. I really did try just about everything I could to get that palm tree back up. The ground was just so soft. I could not get it up. I pulled it over to the right, pulled it towards the pool. I was practically swirling the thing in all different directions. Told it, it was pretty and how much I liked its muscles. Nothing. It's not getting up. The ground just needs to dry a little bit. I'm gonna have someone come over and give me a hand. Fantastic workout though. Can we make that a thing? Put one of these in at the gym? Just lifting palm trees? I'd be down for that all day. Maybe, you see there's still some water down there, but it's supposed to start raining this afternoon, so there's not. Uh, I'm gonna give this another go. I'm not worried about it like this. In fact, with the storms and everything coming through this week and the ground being as saturated as it is, I feel better with the palm tree being like this than having it in a state where it can swirl around and move safety-wise. I actually sort of prefer it like this, but it would look much better if they were upright, but it's okay. We can get there. Guys, thanks for hanging out through this chaos that was the video. Hopefully worthwhile chaos. I think things look nice. It was nice waking up this morning sitting at the table and looking outside and seeing the palm trunks and then coming out here and having them over the head. It's a nice view. It'd be even better when all this is taken care of. Which I'm gonna get started on right now. And that'll be in the next video. Hope everybody's doing well. Comment down below. Say hi. I love talking to everybody. What's going on in your gardens? Hopefully the weather's acting nice for everybody. <laughs> and of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye. Whew. Did it. Couldn't end the video with this thing laying on its side. I thought about it, but I was like, no, no, no. Got to get in there, get that done. The ground had dried out just kind of enough to get in there and get some leverage on it. I went down the hole and got one trunk under my shoulder, lifted the other one from down below and used my legs, got it up high. I kind of had to like, sort of like do like a monkey jump to the other side to swing it over and it's holding in place. There's still some water down there. I'm gonna have to fill this area in. This whole area is mounted up way higher than it needs to be anyways. This used to be lower and then my old queen palm had to go into this location when it got too big to be stored in the winter time. And this is, uh, I feel like I'm just rambling at this point. Point being palm trees in place, it's looking pretty dang good. I'll get that leveled out at some point. Not my focus right at this moment. I would like some more water to drain out of that hole first. Spots always help a good amount of water. It's never hurt any of the palm trees that have been here before. And it is angled slightly far over to the path. It was over more this way before it went down. Slash, I pushed it down so that it, uh oh, oh. 
Is it gonna hold up to the wind? You gonna go anywhere? That ground's real soft. All right, I think we're good. That was a big breeze. We're supposed to have some storms coming, so maybe I won't save that project for later. Maybe I should grab a shovel and start filling that in. I'm gonna do that. Back to everything I was saying before, which I think was, uh, it was, I uh, hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, great life, and everything's just going beautifully for you. <laughs>